I'd like at this seminar to discuss how do we understand the controversies in media. Before I talk about Palestine, I will discuss the differences between peace journalism and war journalism. Uh, then I will analyze one of the patterns of war journalism which can be seen in international and Australian media. So first, peace journalism. Peace journalism should take into consideration the voices of all parties, not merely the elite voices, but also the voices of the victims, the efforts of a human rights group, the truth, peaceful solution, and the initiatives. Peace journalism gives a complete story and stands for truth as opposed to propaganda and lies giving voice. Peace journalism highlights the backgrounds and the contests of the conflicts as well as refuted all allegations and any attempts to change the facts. It pays attention to these stories and focus on peace initiative, the solidarity movements and humanitarian campaign. These stories have a positive effect on the viewer and it leads to the feelings of hope, the sympathy, comfort and contentment. It aims to make real change to achieve alternative and progressive media that can contribute in raising the voices of victims and supporting human rights, social justice, thus helping to build progressive, for example, uh, media. I'd like to give you an idea also about war journalism. Before I started to, to discuss examples about war journalism, the local media in Australia and Western countries and their alliances around the world, or colonial media, have a policy of adopting tradition that can be described as war journalism, in which is dominant in the media and which is biased in favor of violence, conflict, propaganda, victory, intolerance, and elite voices. It doesn't highlight the background and the context of conflict, nor refute it. the allegations and the attempts of changing the facts. War journalism doesn't take into consideration the voices of all parties, such as the voices of victims, the efforts of human rights, groups, the truth, peaceful solutions. It doesn't give a complete story, nor stands for truth. It tends to propaganda and lies voices. The coverage of media has taken an oblivious pattern of war journalism in general. Patterns of war journalism can be seen in international and Australian media. For instance, this report of the news coverage in Australia regarding the aggression in 2014 against Gaza Strip is an example of war journalism. One of journalists writes about the latest news in Gaza entitled A Ceasefire in Gaza has collapsed amid more violence as Hamas denied it has kidnapped an Israeli soldier. And under this title there is a photo of bombings. He begins his report with confirming that a fresh that a fresh wave of violence 
has killed dozens in Gaza after the collapse of UN and US backed ceasefire. The journalist considers the collapse of the UN and US backed ceasefire in Gaza is because Hamas denied, denies it kidnapped an Israeli soldier. Moreover, he doesn't highlight the other real reason of the collapse of ceasefire, neglecting the fact that there is aggression from the Israeli occupation against civilians in Gaza who are under this aggression for 55 days. In addition, he described this aggression as a war between two armies. But in fact, Gaza has no army, navy, nor air force. This coverage of aggression against Gaza can be described as war journalism because it is biased in favor of elite voices of the leaders of Israel, ignoring the voices of the sufferings of the civilians. The journalist mentions that Justice Minister Sibi uh, Levni, a member of Israeli security cabinet, accused Hamas of being behind the soldier disappearance and said the group would pay a high price but Hamas on wing denied any acknowledge about the fate of missing soldiers. War journalism that focuses on violence, look, propaganda, elite voices and the victory. Also, some scholars argue when journalists focuses on only on the voices uh, on violence, neglecting peaceful initiatives, this means that violence will increase in, in during the conflict. Also, if we are talking about the effect of these patterns of peaceful or of peace, or sorry, of uh, war journalism, the effect of this pattern of reporting on the psychological responses of readers and audience members will be negative, of course. The report. Uh, of Australian media continues to describe the situation in Gaza by confirming that the changes of the new truth seem far. The information of the report depends on the former sources of Israeli government. When he confirms that Israel said it believes that militants captured the soldier uh, in an attack near Gaza and Rafah, which killed two soldiers. It is, it is clear this report doesn't give a hope because there is no any indicator of any opportunity or any opportunity or any chance to stop this aggression. Therefore, this, in, this uh, report gives the reader a conclusion that the aggression and violence will inc be increased. When the reader reads news like this, they will feel that there is no hope for achieving uh, the truth or protecting civilians soon. Uh, this kind of uh, of uh, coverage or media coverage leads to the feeling of sadness, despair, frustration, angry and depressed. But the journalists, how they can operationalize the peace journalism model? About this, about this uh, report, it is important to take into consideration the criteria to analyze the coverage of this story. It is important to take into consideration some elements. As this report considers the ceasefire has been collapsed because Hamas denied it has kidnapped an Israeli soldier. This report neglecting the background and the context of conflict formation and cause and opinions of every side as, so as to portray conflict in realistic terms transparent to the audience. It is important to focus of this report uh, to, be, uh, to be the truth uh, can be achieved when Israeli occupation 
stop its aggression against Gaza Strip, it is important to focus about the real reason of the conflict in Gaza, not to talk about Hamas just denied kidnapping soldiers. In addition, this aggression is not the first time. The main reason of this violence because of the existence of the occupation in Palestine since 1948 and in Gaza Strip since 1967 and the population of Gaza Strip are still under the block eight of more than 11 years. They didn't write anything about that. Just talking about elite voices, about violence. Also, this report focuses only on the voices of elite and the leaders of Israel and militants, neglecting the voices of victims, civilians, who are suffering from this aggression, the United Nations agreement regarding the protection of civilians, and the reports of human rights centers. For that, it is important to give voice to the views of all parties, not merely the leaders of two sides. It is clear that this report doesn't highlight the ceasefire agreement items. So, we didn't know what is the uh, agreement here, item, but it talks only about the collapse of ceasefire. In fact, a journalist is supposed to not only to inform the readers about ceasefire agreement items, it is important too to focus about offering creative, creative ideas from any source for conflict resolutions, development, peacemaking, and peacekeeping. Uh, the news coverage also highlight on the allegations of Israeli leaders and justifications of, con of the continuation of the aggression against nearly 2 million civilians living in Gaza Strip for 55 days without enough electricity, clean water, medicine, and food. This report should pay attention to focus on the peace initiative, the solidarity movements, and the humanitarian campaign. These stories gave the humanity the hope that people in Gaza are civilians not alone under the aggression. Peace journalism pays attention to peace story and gives the voices for all victims. So if I want to write a report about the situation, for example, in Gaza. For that, it is important to focus the background and the context of the conflict in Gaza. Also, I should refute the allegation and lies of the occupation forces and their attempt to change the facts. It's important to give a complete story and the truth because peace journalism stands for truth as opposed to propaganda, as I said. Uh, the, uh, the truth aspect in peace journalism hold for all sides, like exploration of the conflict formation and giving voice of, to all sides, not only to uh, the elite voices, it's important for all people. And as a journalist, it is important to give the people uh, hope. Because uh, during the war in Gaza, in the fact, a lot of supporters around the world support Gaza. But when we just write like this report, this like, is not clear about the situation. It's not, it not true, the situation like that. And the report should depend on many sources, such as United Nations, human rights reports, the victims, the people, peace activists, in addition, the initiatives and international efforts which have been exerted to, to stop this aggression. In this way, I can, I can like, give all 
sides or the party opportunity to describe the situation in Palestine. And for that, the colonial media all the time is trying to focus about the voices of elite, about violence. They just thinking how to improve our uh, to support the allegation of, of violations of human rights. So, this is what I want to say, and I am ready to any questions. Thank you so much.